Hello, Emesha. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello. How are you today? Thank you so much. I'm fine. Nice Good to, to see, see you. you. Nice to see you too. Okay, let me tell you about the Day Magazine Designer. Um, so uh, the designer started uh, to uh, their first edition in July and the magazine is e-magazine and it uh, is about artists mainly uh, about dancers um, yes as uh, you know actresses uh, painters but it also includes other subjects like uh, environment or women empowerment or health so it's a quite broad uh, subject area but mostly for artists and the, the director uh, is um, Halina Rosa uh, she is a designer from Poland living in Stockholm for many years and she paints on the materials and design her flowers and she has a very much focus on the Polish tradition from mountains because she comes from there and there is our culture main area uh, so she uh, also uh, developed her network internationally and we observed that the magazine uh, um, shows a qu quite big interest internationally because uh, people start to read articles in america in india and more and more uh, want to, want also to get in touch with us so that's why I also tried to focus first on my close network and I see your mm -hmm. hard working and uh, <laughs> all your achievements. So um, yes, please let me uh, tell you a little bit about you. We have some questions uh, which we written down so we can maybe follow that a little bit and you of course can add uh, how much you wish okay so when and where did you start your artistic uh, journey um we <laughs> just jumped into the middle well uh, if those who haven't met me i am a right now my main focus is ballroom and latin dancing and uh, i'm doing it on professional level and uh, i am also a dance teacher but i have a degree as an actress and I used to work as an actress and uh, it's my both both big loves. So uh, right now I'm dancing. Um, the question was when I started my journey was uh, I think when I was very small. Uh, it was all about music in my family and uh, I, I just got into this lovely family when everyone was playing music, they were singing and it got very natural to uh, be great with the rhythm, great with the singing, and uh, I was just surrounded by it. So it was natural for me that both my sister and I are actually singing. She's a classical opera singer, and I went on the musical and more popular uh, way. Yeah, that's very interesting. I see that you was only three years old. Yes, that is really admiring. Yeah, yourself. well, I, I, I started to go, they took me to classical concerts when I was mm -hmm. already three and I was very disciplined and I listened to the music. I probably didn't enjoy it, but it, I just breathed in all the, all the music through my childhood. All right. Who was and are your biggest icons? within art, musical, dance, and why? <laughs> it's an interesting question. I wouldn't say I actually have a special icon or I had maybe one and one icon through all the eras during my life. I like to say that, for example, in music, I like, uh, I have favorite musicals. So I can say that Elizabeth is one of my biggest and favorite musicals. And then I can say that I have favorite dancers, but they are not 
especially very famous, I dislike them because they remind me how I could be a dancer. Mm -hmm. I like their special a little bit, like Daniela Caragac, uh, Nino from uh, USA, yes. and uh, for example, Anastasia Duproskaya. But they are mm -hmm. not super famous. They're just, they're just known. You like their style. They're a little bit... I like their style because they're different. They yes. are, they're more rhythmical, they're more musical, they're more, yeah. they're there to be a little bit different and more it's, abstract and grotesque in yes, their movements. I, I understand. And uh, that's fascinating because we used to, you know, um, find our special people, you know, within different areas which just catch the specific unique things we just focus on so yes. and we can just you know individually adapt to our style what we can see in them um yeah, because they say that perfect is boring so they are <laughs> definitely not perfect but interesting to watch yeah what does artistic creation mean for you what are your favorite arts you did <laughs> um, I, uh, I, as I said, I studied to become an actress and I actually studied theater and film acting. So I wasn't studying to become a musical actress, but mm. I became one. I worked with music. And then when I moved to Stockholm, I studied uh, to become a musical actress. And the whole way uh, from childhood, I was always dancing. I danced most my life I danced ballroom and Latin but I also had very strong ballet basic uh, contemporary dance and uh, I would say something that is called theater movement so I used to perform uh, without any speaking as well so it's just it's just something special it's like contact dance and um, having uh, being on stage and having a theater uh, show without speaking but it's not dancing it's just between the two of these things um, and I think you said artistic creation for me is something that you perform live uh, that you have this little moment just you and the audience mm. and uh, that magical moment that will never be the same on tv or never be the same when you watch it back on video it just yeah. happens there and uh, when you you feel like you really caught the attention of the public and you involve them yeah. and they want to be the part of you they don't just it's not about being amazing the public it's the yeah. audience it's more about involving them in your moment yes. and uh, creating this special atmosphere mm. on stage or on the dance floor I yes. think that's Mostly I would say that I love, I love performing life because that's real magic. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And I also observe that this is uh, such amazing experience to see the audience emotions uh, when they watch your acting, yes? So yeah. it's... Uh, you, it's safe to say that when you're on stage you have a lot of lamps in your face that you mm. not always see the, it's different when you dance then you see them but mm. you can hear the silence of the attention okay. for example on stage so that's when you know that it was something that you did and it, of course you get this applaud applaud at the end that you know that oh it was something yeah or they just write you a message or something and then they then they give you a little feedback about your work yes and you train also very hard because you train six to ten hours a day. How how do you manage that? <laughs> how I manage it? Uh, I eat well. <laughs> um, um, honestly, it's not always six to ten hours of training. It's about mm. small practices, working on details. Sometimes it can be involved in only one hour work, mm -hmm. but. Uh, how I try to manage that, as I said, I actually eat very healthy. Mm -hmm. I think about my weight in, in the, I, 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 many women hate me for that, but I can't put on weight. Mm -hmm. I struggle to put on mm -hmm. muscles. So I mm -hmm. have to eat more because I forget to eat mm -hmm. healthy. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So I, I work with nutritionists. We have a mm. physiotherapy priest who helps us to develop our body and muscles and mm. to because if you're standing and dancing so many hours you will get some injuries and it's also important that we with my partner we are trying to help each other we learn how to treat some injuries mm. um and it's, it's it's safe to stay motivated i guess there's always something to work on so yes um when we go back a little bit to your acting in the TV and in the theater, yes, my mother was actually actress in the theater when she was oh, a young wow. girl and I didn't know about it, you know, she, I was just watching album of my photos and I was like, oh, what did you do there in Krakow? And she was like, oh, I've forgotten to tell you. And you know, <laughs> it's so, uh, like, uh, it's so uh, funny because it was not so long time ago and I was thinking about you. Um, but do you see any difference in acting in the Hungary and in uh, Sweden? Well, from my point of view, it's very different because Swedish mm -hmm. is my third language. Mm -hmm. So I can say, it's safe to say that I always struggle a little bit more than any native speaking uh, Swedish person. But I also think that it's very different nations. We have different tempers. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it's all about the actress itself or the actor itself but if you ask like do we have different um methods that we call it methods do we have different methods i think they're teaching different methods i don't want to go into very deeply into mm -hmm. uh i haven't studied in hungary uh, acting for many many years so maybe they are also taking something from what we do in sweden but i used to work with different methods and directors also work with that method and here it's a little bit different which is both very exciting and i can say that i can take uh, one of from each one is more the russian way and uh, then there is a little bit of new and american way for it i need to add that i actually had this honor to watch you in the theater Yes, in Kulturama in Stockholm. We will talk a like, little bit later on on that. And I heard your Swedish and I believe it's really, really good. Especially <laughs> that it was a lot of words which, and uh, really difficult words, you know, uh, to, to spell. Uh, so I felt really impressed uh, watching that and was really involved in your, your acting. I really cried and laughed during the whole sessions. So. So yeah, it's, um, I believe in you and your talents. So you just grow Thank and it's so, so, so nice to watch you, how fast you grow. Um, Thank you. That sounds that's very nice to hear. Who is your biggest support in development within your theatrical career? Um, I would say that each each rehearsal was very important in my life. I played quite a lot in Hungary. I had a lot of shows. I played in dramas. I played on TV, um, in musicals, and I think uh, on on the at the academy in Hungary and also in, here in Sweden, I learned a lot from my teachers. But you are not finishing learning when you come mm. out with your fresh degree. I think you learn the most when you actually pushed on stage and they say, here is, here is your real role. Now you are, yes. now you have, now you have everything you can try to do. And that is a bit scary, but I think I learned from each rehearsal and each actually role, mm. uh, everything. Okay. So it was always interesting to play someone who I'm not in the real life. Mm. Okay, so if we go back to what I mentioned, it in uh, 2019 you played in the musical Made in Dagenham at Kulturama in yeah. Stockholm. The subject we, we, it was very strong. Uh, how did you feel about it? Could you, tell, could you please tell us about it a little bit? Um, is Made in Dagenham is a musical about a true story that happened in the end of the 60s that uh, a bunch of uh, sewing machinists 
went on strike for equal payment mm. and uh, they wrote a book about it and then it was success and they wrote uh, amazing musical about it and it's all about uh, equality i don't want to really be like political but it's still a problem in 2020 in many countries luckily sweden is not uh, probably one of those countries but where i'm from and i think where you are from it still can be an issue that equality is not uh, not there yet or the development of the country is not there yet and not to mention other countries yeah that's true i think we will uh, fight with these subjects the rest of our lives uh, hopefully not our daughters uh, but yeah we will see you have many talents from dance ballet ballroom zumba design of clothes thinking acting what's your biggest focus um the word uh, the expression of talent mm -hmm. is uh, it actually means that you have a natural natural talent you're good naturally at something without learning it so mm -hmm. i i never never know what to say about talent when people said to me you're so talented but if you know me you know that i'm actually this crazy know-it-all i always study a lot i analyze everything and i love to be uh in the details i just lose myself in the details and i i have this special thing that my dance partner doesn't really like i'm i have to be perfect i gotta do perfect i have to nail it so um i can say that i have studied all of these things i studied music i studied classical music uh, musical uh, singing i play two instruments i i learned to dance ballet i learned to dance contemporary i learned to dance ballroom and i love to work on these little, little details so i never i was never that person who like went on the show like a mega star or what do you have in X Factor or something and sang mm. and everyone was like wow have you ever learned to sing and and I would be like, yeah, I struggled with it for many years, for many years, and I just, I just had to learn the right technique for it. So everything is a lot of hard work. Mm. Uh, maybe what talent I have is actually that I have maybe good ears, so mm. I, I hear. Of course. I hear well. I'm very musical. Yes, I believe a lot of things are you're very hardworking, and a lot of things you have talents which can be like you know identified on your way um yes. yeah because some things people learn faster and some people need to do the same things longer time yes um that's true how do you find your spirit in dance competition challenge to show uh, to share your emotions mm. well um if you see me before a dance competition i am the one who's standing in the corner and so nervous i can't talk to anyone because i have this uh no one has a pressure on me i put the pressure on myself that i have as i said i have to be perfect i have to nail it um but i also worked with um some sports psychologists and some big names for example Ruth verme who just um they gave me some push how you can think before you go on the dance floor and i'm not nervous when i stand on the dance floor but i can be crazy nervous before i walk on the floor and then how i find myself is that they turn on the music and yeah. and i know that music is my best friend and yeah. i just climb on the music and try to like and i enjoy every moment of it from the second they turn it on and I, I just lose myself in it. And then it becomes art. Before that, it's just nerves. <laughs> yeah. If it's a competition. Mm. So, um, how do you mentally manage hard training and intensive competition period? Is there anyone who provide motivation training for you? So you mentioned Ruud Verme. Yes, we know him uh, as an international consultancy expert with, for many dancers. And uh, if I can uh, say following questions, do you see any need 
or mourning now during these times of pandemic uh, for this uh, need of motivation training internationally for other dancers as well? Mm. I think that this is the time when everyone is, uh, it's, for everyone it's very hard to find the motivation. So it can happen that you just give up and you mm. just uh, skip going to dancing and first you don't go every day, then you only go three times, then you don't go mm. and then you realize that it's not the word. Mm. If it doesn't mean the word for you, it, it might be reason to leave. but there is the other way that for me and for my dance partner Per, we feel like this is a time to educate ourselves to work because mm. finally finally we have the time to work on the details to just mm. get better and get better and come back stronger on the dance floor when it's for real competitions yeah. so that is how we find motivation we push each other and of mm. course we have amazing coaches mm. and teachers all around the world who can who can help us with it uh, when you see uh, younger dancers than you like a couple or solo girls how would you motivate them uh, as you are already a coach yes for some groups younger groups than you and uh, there are many solo girls who are missing dance partners and uh, especially now in this during this time they can even more lose uh, motivation because it's less dancers of course and how about younger dance also if uh, someone could build bigger groupers groups of younger dancers what what would be your advice for this group well what i'm trying to do is that i have a class called lady style where we are only working on uh, lady steps, lady technique, and we focus a lot on them to become stronger. Uh, and the reason is because it's we we have an issue in this uh, dance sport that we don't have so many men. It's very hard mm. to find a man. We have some uh, free men, but they are higher, higher. Uh, mm. They have higher education and knowledge, and they mm. are higher class in dancing. And I always tell these ladies that you can't wait at home, sit at home and mm. wait for Prince Charming. Mm. You you just got to go out on the dance floor and try. We have something that's called solo category. Mm. So you can show yourself and push yourself and get the better, best you can do with your dancing. That when Prince Charming comes, <laughs> yes. you, are, you, you are on the level that it will be no issue anymore. So, yes. Yes, and there are organized competition in the world, of course, also. And uh, starting solo. also in Sweden, in some organization are already in another one will start. So probably this will develop. We hope that this pandemic yes. also will uh, finish soon so we can continue our dream. Just like, just like you did yes. when you look for them, you made stronger. What what drives you? What a good question. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that um, I always had a very good uh, back, background. I can say that my whole family, all my friends, every each one of them are very supportive about it. Everything. So I was very lucky growing up. I never had any uh, problems like in the family that I was I wanted to be an artist it was obvious they wanted mm. me to become yeah. an artist and be free and do whatever I wanted to and everyone who who sees me and uh, or just uh, sees me through the tv when I'm dancing they're all supportive and they're sending all these lovely messages even if we never met or something some of them just maybe following me on Instagram. And it's so nice that there are people who appreciate what I do and it's special for them. And that makes me want it and hard more and work for it a little bit even more. Yes, and people cheering Hoira to you also, yes? 
Yes, yes, you, you always shout in Hungarian uh, yeah. in, uh, the competition and people ask me who was the Hungarian shouting <laughs> in the back and I'm like <gasps> Yeah, I try to learn this different language because then maybe it will give you more energy <laughs> Yeah, 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 I try to learn some Polish and I'm yeah. not good with it I'm just, My mother-in-law is Polish so yeah. I always try to pick up some words but it's yeah. crazy, I try to actually a period I was learning Polish on okay. the internet and it didn't work well it's just, <laughs> it's just un unbelievable it's hard yeah I can't do it okay as you mentioned it you are also a dance teacher and recently opened it your dance sport club uh, what drives you in teaching and what is your main goal with it um, I I, my first uh, teaching lesson was when I was a young teenager and mm -hmm. I started to dance with one of the young teachers at the club and I became an assistant for him and then eventually I was substituting for him so I learned why I was so young and I always thought it was fun but uh, when I grew up for real and got the opportunity to study and to lead groups at the uh, Alemona Dance Club I took it and uh, we, they sent us to education to mm -hmm. the Dance Sport Federation and we are it's an ongoing degree because mm -hmm. I have like the second level and I can only take the third level when I become a judge mm -hmm. and I'm still active uh, competitor mm -hmm. but it's just about education and uh, uh, so I started to teach and I really enjoy it because I think I'm very clear about all the information. <laughs> Not like Per, I'm teaching with my dance partner, Per, he always gets lost in the details. He talks about footwork and they don't sometimes even know which foot they have to take. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's why we are perfect. Uh, I think we are a perfect match together. And we opened our dance club. It was uh, lucky we could open this dance club because We've been planning on it and then the whole situation came during yeah. the spring, but during the summer we decided that we would start very small mm -hmm. and luckily we are, we are doing great. We have very mm -hmm. small amounts of groups and yes. we have uh, restrictions, how many can be in the room. Yeah. They are only dancing with each other, usually couples coming yeah. like when married or yes. just couples coming and they can, they can dance together. Uh, it's harder to teach because we are never helping them evidently mm -hmm. or something. Um, so we take that uh, seriously. It, I believe it would be a little bit easier Yes, to, uh, because more people would want to join the classes. They are, yeah. I understand they they choosing not to come, and we also had to like take some pause. Mm. Uh, and now, hopefully, from January end of January, we have to add an extra day, mm -hmm. but still very limited. Uh, limited, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. But the dream was that we will have our own club, and eventually, when we we become uh, we leave the amateur league and become professionals um, yeah. and, and compete only in professionals we will become judges and uh, then uh, create the new generation for dancing because we really mm. need that so we have very small children we have five-year-old to yeah. uh, the old uh, couples as well so we we try to give uh, every age group something that they can try at yes. the club. And uh, what kind of dance style do you provide in your dance club? Östermalm, um, yes. Dance group is called Östermalm. Östermalm's dance, dance club in Swedish, yes, yes Östermalm's dance club. Uh, we have everything on the website uh, and we're coming out with new season, new uh, classes for the season. We have, as I said, we have the very small ones. Yeah. They are, uh, this is called like a dance mix. Yes. for children because you can't start to teach them uh, ballroom when they're that no. small they're interested in disco they're interested in yeah. literally finding i'm i i like to say that we're trying to introduce them music yeah so they try to play with the rhythm we clap we walk we mm. do a little bit of jazz walks mm -hmm. uh we we even <laughs> i had to actually educate myself in tiktok dance because that's what they love to do. So yeah. at the end of the class, I always say, 
bring a song and then yeah. they have the opportunity to teach me something yeah. and I stand there and do see, 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 see. <laughs> so I learn all the TikTok songs yeah. but that's what they enjoy so maybe yes. we have to do waltz and we do tango and we do cha-cha-cha at the end of the class they get to dance a little bit of TikTok yeah. and that is the the nice part for them because the, they, the power of they, innovation yes yes exactly <laughs> uh, but we for, also for, have, for adults what do you have for adults yeah they don't get TikTok. <laughs> um, <laughs> for adults we have the the ballroom and laughing classes okay. that is always we always love to say that you should learn every everything together so we have ballroom latin class is one hour long 30 mm -hmm. minutes ballroom and 30 minutes latin, latin. And okay. if someone comes only like, I only want to learn Latin, they will love the ballroom and uh, vice versa. Mm -hmm. So we'll come for ballroom and they will learn Latin. And uh, that's, that is, that is like, we have full house, luckily, and already mm -hmm. have, uh, we have to make a new day to date, new mm -hmm. dates to, mm -hmm. to start our classes uh, in January. And then we also, I also am a Zumba instructor. Yeah. which is a fitness, Latin fitness uh, um, training pass. It's mm -hmm. one hour and that's just a free, free dancing. I, I build up these classes too. I, I like because it, I like it because I'm, I'm not only a Zimbo instructor, but a professional dancer. So I yes. see from the dancer point of view, it's very easy for me to build up choreographies and uh, to make the whole body move. And um, I think they really enjoy it. It's quite hard, so it's it, they they love to come. Yeah, and, uh, and 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 dance is also, of course, a very good form of uh, physical training. Uh, training yes. yes, because it's with the music and it's very good for yes. brain, according to the research. Yes. And it's also recommended to train different styles of the dance. Yes, because for us, for dancers, also it is recommended. Yes. Yes, especially. I, I, I love, actually, Per, my dance partner, I force him to dance in the first uh, line. And I always, <laughs> yeah, I'm very hard on him because he develops so much different coordination that he never learned. Yes. And everyone's brain develops. So for dancers, yeah. it's very nice to mm. just go out from your own comfort zone and instead of doing rumba walks you just yeah. just do a little bit of merengue reggaeton and try to use your body a little bit more free yeah. than how we are structured and learned when we are uh, doing technique and from a technique book and yes um, so i think it's fun and it's very good it burns a lot of calories it's all mm. endorphin and we just dance to it. and i have lovely music like i did all the uh, spare uh, player list sometimes i speak swedish <laughs> like i did the playlist so they enjoy yeah. it a lot yeah and i enjoyed really also your choreography because you are a very creative person so i really enjoyed zumba and it helped me to be honest also in my motoric to samba to dance samba yes. so so yes. i really enjoyed and also got some new skills of course of that so it was yeah quite you should nice. come whenever you would like to our <laughs> class you. you are always an honor member and come and try thank it out thank you okay last question uh, what are your three biggest dream dreams you have to say three okay you can say you can say the whole list <laughs> I can say uh, I don't actually have to say answer this question. Um, I think my biggest dream is in career to to do as successful as I can, and um, to like right now my dream is to to also not only about myself but about the new generation in dancing. Mm. So I hope to be good enough for them because mm. they will learn from me so yeah. I would like to be the best dancer I can my body handles and I will mm. not get old and I until I can handle the training and the dancing yeah. to develop my own dancing so when I'm when I'm old enough to leave the floor and give it to the next generation 
and I can give them like this is what I learned and um, this is yours now and so I, I did my best with it and of course these dreams it's not a dream but always I wish hell for all my friends and family um, I don't have crazy dreams like I would like to become Beyonce's best friend or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can happen. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay. So I would say this. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and your stories. Uh, we are out of the time. Uh, I you. don't want to take more your time because I know that you had a hard day today at work. No, I was teaching all day and I think... Uh, it's it can be tiring but they also give a lot of energy to me because yeah. i love how they to see how they develop yeah, and they're happy at the that. end of the lesson that's thank you very so nice much for very nice thank you so much and have a nice evening see you tomorrow bye bye thank you. bye bye bye